I'm speaking today with Zometry supplier quality engineer Tu Akambare about metal finishes. In this case, anodized chem film and metal plating. I want to learn about what they are, why they're used, and when to use them appropriately. All right, so first things first, why would I even finish a metal part? Um, so the common thread in all this is, of course, uh, corrosion resistance. For example, aluminum is a lightweight material, but it is deficient um, in terms of its um, cosmetic properties and its mechanical properties. But these can be enhanced through metal finishing. Okay, so corrosion resistance is the key factor in all these, but what's the difference between anodized chem film and metal plating? So if you're looking for a general purpose finish um, to reduce damage, wear, and corrosion, uh, you, consider, you, should, you should consider analyzing your machine part. What anodizing is, it's a controlled oxidation process to treat metals like aluminum or titanium. What this does is it forms a uh, thin oxide layer through an electrochemical bath. In this bath, um, dyes can be locked into the layer to give the part a more aesthetically pleasing um, look. For example, this is a part that has been dyed blue um, during its anodized bath. There are two main um, types of anodized used, type 2 and type 3. Type 2 does add um, corrosion resistance to the part. Um, type 3 is usually used in more industrial applications where more ruggedness is needed. Type 3, which is a hard coat anodized, um, builds up a thicker oxide layer, which can range anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000. Uh, this might not seem like a lot, but when you're dealing with tighter tolerances or um, some critical design features, this could make or break the part. When I talk about anodized versus uh, chem film, what's the difference there? Like, what is chem film? So chem film, um, it's commonly called um, allodyne or iodide. Um, those are the brand names for it. Um, but what it is, it's a it's a chroma conversion done to the outside layer of a part. It protects the um, the raw aluminum. This process can be clear or yellow, yellow or gold. I do have a um, gold um, chem film part here in front of me. It is um, commonly used for electronic enclosures. The chem film process does uh, protect against that natural oxide layer um, that does occur with aluminum over time. The chem film actually protects uh, the natural ele electric um, conductivity of the part. Also with chem film, it does provide the surface with better adhesion for other processes like um, powder coating, which you do see here. So, okay, so when I'm, uh, when I'm powder coating, I may use chem film to prevent corrosion resistance on whatever is not powder coated. Uh, and as well as when I'm using this for electronic enclosure, enclosures, it allows me to ground to my uh, part, for example. So it's very good to keep that natural electrical conductivity. So from what I understand, metal plating just requires a conductive surface. Is that right? Yes. That is right. Um, another type of metal plating um, is uh, nickel plating. Um, what this does is it forms a tough external shell around the part. This external shell uh, provides both corrosion resistance and helps prevent rusting. Since the only requirement for most metal plating is that the surface must be conductive, um, you can plate a wide variety of materials successfully. Yeah. You can even uh, plate parts with the precious metal. Uh, for example, plating a copper part uh, with with gold. What this does, it um, it increases overall contact um, conductivity. Oftentimes, that underlayer are used to better um, adhere the plating materials or add an additional char characteristic. So I've seen things like where I use a light layer of copper to increase conductivity in order to do a nickel buildup on that. So it's really interesting that you can merge properties of different metals by using plating. I could take a softer metal and kind of candy coat it with nickel, so mm -hmm. it's all of a sudden durable, stiffer, and more ruggedized. What are your concerns and what are the things that I need to know? What is the fine print of these processes? That's a good question. Uh, so the common misconception is that um, with these surface treatments, um, you can still retain the surface finish of the part, um, which is not. Uh, correct. This is especially apparent with um, some of the uh, clear um, post processes being um, anodized or cam film. Typically, we do expect more of a cloudy or matte finish after these treatments, which, with some assessment to metal plating, where thickness buildup uh, could even uh, could even out the surface roughness of the part. 
Um, but both hardcore anodized and plating add um, thickness to the part, often a little bit over one thou. So if you're dealing um, with tighter dimensions or um, a part where certain um, features may be critical, I would definitely say um, take a second look at your design and make sure that um, all these dimensions do still work uh, with post processing. All these processes do require the parts to be dipped in water. Parts are usually wrapped by small hooks, typically using um, whatever external holes are available. This will cause small racking or hooking marks on the part that may be visible after the surface treatment is done. So I've seen, and I've seen these racking marks before, they usually look like little tiny notches or nubs that are right between your different finishes or right on the edge of a hole. It's really important, especially if you have something that's going to be seen from both sides, to understand that rack marks may be visible if you have some of these post processes. So this is really good information. Uh, now this part in front of me has multiple finishes. How's that done? It is common to have multiple finishes such as chem film or black anodized. In these cases of multiple finishes, what you would need to do is uh, finish the part with the initial finish, um, mask it, and then um, have the part finished to the secondary finish. I can add multiple finishes. Uh, it definitely does require some custom handling. I can even add stuff like on this part here, we have some silk screen to show different text and letterings. And that's done after finish one, finish two, and then my silk screen. I've learned so much today. And thank you so much for taking the time to talk about these different surface finishes. I know this is just the tip of the iceberg. So what questions do you have about metal finishing? Zometry has design guides, a knowledge base, and resources just like Tolu that can help you through your design, engineering, and manufacturing process. Go to www.zometry.com and check it out today. Tolu, thank you so much for sharing this information today. I really appreciate your time and your expertise on the subject. No problem at all, Greg, anytime.